Good morning, my friends. It is another snowy day here in the Dirty Jurors. We are expecting between four and six inches of snow. The snow that you see on the ground is old. That's from the beginning of the week. It just started snowing about two hours ago, so not too much new stuff has accumulated, as you can tell by the footprints out there. All the chickens are not happy. They are <laughs> huddled anywhere there is a roof. They do not like to walk on the snow, and we do have a lot of the coop covered with roofs, so they are good out there. They have a heated water, so their water's not gonna freeze. Plenty of food and plenty of warm shavings. Andrew is off today um, because it is exam makeups, so he does not have to be there. And actually, they closed the school anyway this morning. So, bonus. Doug is going into work. He's lucky. He only works two miles from our home. He said he's going to watch the weather, and if it gets bad later on, he's just going to come home and finish his day from work. But I've got his coffee started. I've got my tea started and I have his breakfast started. He takes breakfast and lunch to work every day. Um, for breakfast this morning, I am making him some chunky monkey oatmeal. So I've just got the water in the pot with a little vanilla and the bananas that we have are not yet ripe, but I did have a banana in the freezer. So I quickly thawed that out and I'm gonna put that right in with the water he likes a Chunky Monkey oatmeal bowl. And that's basically just oatmeal with peanut butter and nuts and sliced banana. But since our bananas are not quite ripe yet and I had this in the freezer, what I like to do is just add the freezer banana, we'll call it, right to the oatmeal water. I know it doesn't look great, but trust me, it tastes fine. It just flavors the oatmeal with the banana. And as soon as that boils, we'll just add the oatmeal in and we'll cook it all together. And you never know that there was a freezer banana in there. Once the water boils, I'm just gonna add in the oats give them a stir. And turn this down and let them cook until all the water is absorbed and the oats are done. These are um, old fashioned rolled oats. Okay, there's the oatmeal, nice and delicious and creamy looking. I'm just gonna add in a little bit of half and half. That way when it gets reheated, it won't be too thick and lumpy. Okay, everything is ready to go in Doug's lunch. The only thing I don't have here this morning that I usually pack in his lunch is yogurt. I did not get it made yesterday through no fault of anyone but my own. So I'm gonna get yogurt made today because it usually takes a little cup of yogurt with a little drizzle of honey in it and some granola. But for lunch, he has leftover chicken pie, a slice of that. And he has some leftover salad. And at work already, he has um, a container full of cucumbers and peppers and broccoli and celery and carrots and some ranch dip. Um, I packed him enough for two days yesterday. So, or three days probably. So he has that at work already. And I also have grapes for him. I'm just doing one fruit because there is banana in the oatmeal. And then we've got his oatmeal. And in the oatmeal is the banana. And he has peanut butter at work. 
um, his little snack drawer. So he'll put a tablespoon or so of peanut butter in here and let it melt in there. And then I have some pecans that he will top it with. So there is his lunch all packed. I'm gonna let his coffee brew for a few more minutes before I press it and get that ready for him. Last night I got my sourdough out of the fridge. It's been hanging out in there for a couple weeks actually and I fed it. You can see she is nice and bubbly and has doubled in size already. We're gonna use her today for English muffins because I think I'm down to like two English muffins in the freezer. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna make bread, we're gonna make yogurt and see what else we can get into. And off he goes. So far, we're not sticking on the steps because we had um, ice melt down on the steps. Um, some salt, so that's not sticking. That was left over from the last storm, which is good. But you can see the streets are covered. And it's still coming down pretty darn hard. It's supposed to do this all day. So what a perfect day to be inside making the bread and all the other stuff. Okay, let's get started on all these snowy day kitchen projects. So first thing I'm gonna do is get my yogurt started. Uh, I used to do a cold start method where I used um, Fairlife milk. Totally easy, good way to start if you're not, if you've never done yogurt. But now I don't do that because number one, I don't wanna buy different milk um, and I wanna use the kind of milk that we prefer, either raw milk or if I can't get raw milk, organic milk. So that's what I have here. So I am just going to add this into my Instant Pot. Now you, I believe, you can also make yogurt in a crock pot. I've never done it, but I know you can do it. So when you're making the cooked method, when you're making, when you're making the cold start method, you just put in your Fairlife milk and you put in your yogurt, you mix it together and that's it, you push the button. When you're making the cooked method, you have to put in your milk into your Instant Pot and then you hit the yogurt button until it says boil. Put the lid on. Now, if you have one of those glass lids, you can use that, I don't. So I just throw this lid on, you don't have to you know, put it on vent or anything like that. You don't have to lock it because you're not building pressure. So you just put it on boil and you let it go. You need to bring this up to 185, I believe it is, 185 degrees you need to bring the milk up to. And once it's up to 185 degrees, we need to cool it down to 110, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So for right now, we're just going to let that go and wait until it gets up to 185. Normally when the boil cycle's over, it's fine. I do take the lid off, I stir it every once in a while and I check the temperature um, just to see where we're at. Sometimes it's done before, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. But we're just gonna let that go and get started on some other projects. Okay, our yogurt is up to temperature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my pot holders Actually, I don't need them. Take the pot out and I'm gonna put them in the sink where I have about two inches of cool water. Okay, I have our pot sitting in the cool water and I have my thermometer in there and every once in a while I just give it a little stir and check the temperature. We wanna get it down to 110. Okay, friends, close enough to 110. I'm gonna take the pot out of the sink, dry off the bottom really well. Um, I don't wanna put it wet in the Instant Pot, so I'm gonna dry it off real well, and then we're gonna just move on to the next step. Okay, our next step is to add in our yogurt. You need yogurt to make yogurt. And if you saw my menu plan and grocery haul from yesterday, you saw that I forgot to save some of my yogurt. So I bought a little thing of yogurt to start the yogurt. You really, you only need about a tablespoon or two, about two, but I have this, so I just throw it all in. Doesn't really matter. Now, 
if you would like at this point, you can put vanilla in here and make a vanilla flavored yogurt. Sometimes I use this yogurt for other things, like I use it in place of mayonnaise or sour cream or use it half and half. So I don't like to flavor it. We just flavor it with either honey or maple syrup and granola and fruit when we eat it. But if you're just gonna be eating it and want a vanilla, just you go ahead and you throw some vanilla in there. Okay, so once your yogurt is really, really mixed in there well, we're just gonna put the lid back on. I don't even have a gasket in here because we're not pressure cooking. And then we are going to hit the yogurt button. I like to incubate mine for eight hours. You can incubate it as long as you like. Minimum of eight hours, um, probably maximum of 24. But just push the button, let it go. So eight hours and we'll check our yogurt. Okay, we're gonna get started on our English muffins. So the first thing I did was I heat it. I'm doubling the recipe. So I heat it one and a third cups of milk and four tablespoons of butter to 115 degrees. And I just do it on the stove and use my meat thermometer to keep an eye on it. If you use a microwave, you can most certainly do it right in there in a glass measuring cup. So once we have that in there, I'm going to add in two tablespoons of sugar and I'm going to stir it until the sugar is dissolved. The next thing I'm gonna do is add in two cups of active bubbly starter. And I did feed this last night, so it is quite active and bubbly. Need to get my spatula. Now, if you want to make homemade English muffins and you don't do sourdough, there are a lot of recipes out there on Pinterest, Google, whatever. Just English muffins not made with sourdough. So don't let not doing sourdough stop you from making homemade English muffins. Because they're out there, friends. They are out there. Okay, we are just going to... Combine that, get that sourdough starter all worked in. You can use a spoon, a spatula, a whisk, whatever. This is called a Danish dough whisk. Oh my goodness, do I love this. It works very, very nicely for breads and all sorts of things. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use some yeast. Yes, I know it's sourdough, but this is what the recipe calls for, so this is what we do. We're going to use two teaspoons of instant yeast. That's like a saff yeast. And we're just going to sprinkle that right over the top of the sourdough. And we're gonna stir that in. The next thing we're gonna do is add in half the flour. And like I said, I am doubling this. So I'm gonna be adding in two cups of flour. Okay, I have my first two cups of flour in there. And I'm just going to mix that in. I did not put an apron on today because I just have old comfy clothes on. 
I just have on tights and a sweatshirt that's three sizes too big and I'm so cozy, comfy, I don't even care about an apron. Actually, I'm getting a little warm because I was talking to Kim this morning on the phone. She was cracking up. I was getting dressed and I have on leggings, a long sleeve t-shirt, a sweatshirt, two pair of socks, and my Ugg slippers or Ugg talismans. She's like, my God, girl, are you going outside to shovel? I'm like, no, that's my inside clothes. But I'm getting a little warm now, so. Okay, there's the first two. So now we're gonna add two more cups of flour in here. And it is a little bit of a sticky dough. I've tried several sourdough English muffin recipes, and I really like this one. Um, I'm not a great planner when it comes to like letting things ferment overnight, getting stuff ready the night before. And this one, you don't have to do that. This one is just mix and go. And that is what I like about it. Okay, I'm gonna just get in here with my hands now because it's getting a little thick. We are just gonna get all this combined till we have a nice cohesive dough. And the reason that you use the yeast is because we are not letting this ferment. Would it be better for our gut health if we let it ferment? Probably, but that's okay. Okay, that is looking good. So now we're just gonna turn it out. I'm gonna cut this in half, actually. I like to work with smaller pieces of dough. We're gonna turn it out onto a, our counter, which I'm gonna lightly flour. And we are going to roll it out to a half an inch thickness and then use a three inch cookie cutter. Now I use different size cookie cutters depending. Um, my guys like a little bit of a bigger English muffin. So sometimes I'll use a three and a half inch. I like a three inch English muffin. It's enough for me. Um, when I've done things where I was making like big breakfast sandwiches, I've used a four inch, so you can do whatever you want. There's really no rules. It'll just depend on, you know, how many you get out of it, but I am gonna use a three inch cutter today. Before I start rolling out and cutting, I'm gonna prepare my pan. I just have my big sheet pan here and I'm just sprinkling some cornmeal on it that'll just prevent from sticking and it'll give it that nice crunchy cornmeal bottom like you get on your Thomas's English muffins. Let's push that out of the way and we'll get this rolled out. Now I am really really bad about knowing measurements so I always pull out my handy dandy kitchen ruler and measure a half inch. Actually, there's one right on my, my bench scraper, but I like my big wooden ruler. That's my favorite one to use. Okay, we're just, a little off here, so we're just gonna give that a little nudge. Doesn't have to be perfect, my friends. Does not have to be perfect. A little thin down this end, so we're just gonna zhuzh it in a little bit. And see what we have. There we go, works for me. So now we're just gonna take our cookie cutter 
If it's sticking, you can dip it in the flour. Get these all cut out and onto our sheet. Now these, they don't rise like bread rises, but they do get super puffy. You'll know, you'll see it. Um, we're gonna let them sit for about an hour until they get nice and puffy. I'm just gonna cover them with a cloth, put them aside in a warm place. Not that there's a whole lot of warm places today here, but I'm just going to re-roll this and cut. I try not to re-roll it too many times because you don't want them to get tough, but a couple times is okay. Then we will do the other half. I'll probably need another sheet pan. And we'll let them sit for an hour and then we'll get them all cooked up. Okay, our English muffins are all done and I'm gonna let them rest for about an hour or so. I ended up doing a bunch of three inch ones and a bunch of three and a half because the guys do like a little bit of a bigger one. And I like a little bit of a bigger one when I make a breakfast sandwich. But if I'm just eating it as a side, like toast with an egg, I like the smaller ones. So we just did a little combination of both. And I am just gonna cover them now with this flour sack towel and let them rise for an hour. And, um, Cause it's okay if they go more than an hour and they may have to because of the cold. I actually ended up moving them into the dining room, a um, little bit warmer in here, away from that sliding glass door. So we're just gonna let them sit now. Womp womp. Just remembered what I forgot. I forgot to add salt to the English muffins. Darn it. Well, they're just for us, they're not to sell, so. Darn it. I love the recipe I use, I think I said that, but I don't love it because a proper recipe is written in the order that you use the ingredients. This recipe is not, it's Helter Skelter. I am going to take time to rewrite this recipe the way I want it written. This is not the first time I have done this. See, you can't add the salt right in with the yeast mixture because salt will kill yeast. So I wait till I'm done the first round of flour, add the salt in, then add the second round of flour. But the way the recipe is written, it's just, it's not a well-written recipe. So I need to, okay. Mistakes happen. I'm giving myself some grace. Okay, I've got three cast iron skillets heating up on the stove. They're dry. I don't put anything in them. Um, and we're going to get started on cooking the English muffins. Okay, three pans going with our English muffins in. Got a bunch already done. Moving right along here. And we only have 14 seconds until the bread needs to be shaped. So I think Andrew's going to take over here for me. And I'm going to go shape the bread. Okay, while Andrew is finishing up the English muffins for me, I am just getting the bread shaped. I uh, One batch makes two loaves. So I just sway it, cut it in half. Make sure they're the same size. And then just roll it out. I'm not the best bread shaper, so I probably shouldn't even be showing this to you, but that's okay. And then I just roll it up. Nothing fancy. Just roll it nice and tight so you get a good crumb. And then pinch, 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 pinch the seam, make sure it stays pinched together. I know it looks ugly, we're gonna fix that. And then turn it back over, and then I just stick my finger in the ends to push those uneven ends in, and then pull it and stretch it and tuck it under. And 
and then just kind of shape it a little bit so it's even. And then I do this on the counter just to kind of make that seem just a little bit nicer in the back. Make sure your ends are tucked. And like I said, I just do this to make it kind of even. And then we pop it in our loaf pan. This is an eight by four loaf pan. And it is greased. So there's our two loaves. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I am going to uh, cover these and then, <coughs> excuse me, let them rise for about 45 minutes. You'll know in a warm place, not that there's a warm place in my house right now. Actually, the top of the stove's warm. Um, I'm going to let these rise. And we're going to get going on our bagels. So now I'm going to get started on bagels. I'm not making sourdough bagels because I just want to get them done. So in my mixer here, I have 30 ounces of flour. And to that, I'm going to add 14 grams of that instant yeast again. And I'm going to mix that up. Now I have water that is 115 degrees and in there I have a tablespoon of sugar and two tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to add that to the mixer and we're just going to mix on low until everything is moistened. Okay, while that's mixing, I'm gonna add in the salt. Yes, I'm remembering to add the salt this time. And I'm gonna let that keep going just for another minute or two on low. Then I'm gonna turn it up to four for six minutes. If the dough is gonna to be too dry, I'm gonna add a little water. If it's too wet, I'll add some flour. Okay, our dough is done. So I'm just gonna kind of form it into a nice ball and put it in an oiled bowl and we're gonna let this proof for 30 minutes if you use the instant yeast, 90 minutes if you use active dry. I'm just gonna turn it to get the whole thing coated, cover it, let it rise. Okay, there's our beautiful bagel dough. We are going to weigh this out. Um, usually it says to divide it into 24 pieces they are really tiny little bagels. I'm gonna go 18 pieces this time and see what we have. It's a very dense dough. So we've got 1,371 grams of dough. We're gonna divide that by 18. Okay, so we need 76 grams per bagel, approximately. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's double what it's supposed to be. There's 79, 77, 76. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our dough. Oh, these look kind of small too. That's okay, we'll see. Maybe we'll only do them in 12 next time. My guys like a substantial bagel. So I'm just forming this into a ball and then on the counter, just to make it nice and smooth. And then we're gonna poke a hole in the middle and we're gonna stretch it out to about two inches. And we're just gonna lay it right on the same pan 
that we used for the English muffins. I'm not even going to wash it. We don't need to. No reason to. Okay, we got another one. Once again, I'm just going to create some surface tension by pulling it and forming it into a ball. Pinch in the back, rolling it on the counter. Oh my goodness, the snow is coming down at quite the clip, my friends. We're gonna go outside very shortly and do our first shovel. And then we will shovel again when it stops. But this way, it's not as much to heave. Although I think it's pretty light, I don't know. But we definitely wanna have it all done because Doug really should not be shoveling right now just because he's not allowed to do anything um, for three days with the port placement or two days. And yeah, I just don't want him doing it. And I know him, although he was pretty good about it this morning when I said, you know, Andrew and I would do it. He doesn't want to mess up anything either. Okay, so there we go, putting it on here. And then once I get them all done, they need to sit for 10 minutes. Although the first ones are going to be sitting for 10 minutes while I'm doing the last one because these take a little bit of time. We're going to put them in a water bath and boil them and then we're going to bake them. So not bad. A little bit of work, but they're delicious. They really are delicious. So, Okay, I'm going to go finish these up and I'll show you the tray when we're done. Okay, our water solution is boiling, so we are gonna start getting our bagels in. I'm gonna do three at a time. One, two, three. And not because of space, but it's because of what I can manage. And then we are gonna go 30 seconds on each side. Once the 30 seconds is done on this side, we're gonna flip them, do 30 seconds on the other side. I'm gonna drain them with my slotted spoon and put them on my baking sheet lined with parchment ready to go. I think I'm gonna bake these in two separate batches. Okay, flipping them over and going 30. See, these aren't the prettiest at all, but you know what, they're gonna taste good. It doesn't matter if they're beautiful, it's for my family. They appreciate whatever it is I make them. And it may look like I was making those holes in the middle really, really big, but as you can see, they do shrink up again. So you definitely need to uh, make those holes a little bit bigger. Okay, so these are coming out now. I'm just gonna tap them off a little bit, turn them back over to the prettier side to put on my sheet and then get started on the next batch. Then we are going to take care of these all at the same time, but I will show you that when we get to it. Sorry, I didn't know you were recording. Okay, we have half the bagels done and on our tray. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to brush them with an egg wash and then sprinkle them with three different things. Poppy seeds, some homemade everything but the bagel seasoning, and sesame seeds. Um, the only one in the house that likes the everything bagel seasoning is Andrew. So I only make a couple of those because he likes all the other ones too. But no one else really likes that stuff whether it be homemade or commercial, just Andrew. So we're gonna get these all egg washed. Here, it will stop and I'll... And then I just generously, cause I like the toppings, friends. I like the toppings. Sprinkle on our poppies our sesames, and sometimes I do both poppy and sesame. Depends on my mood. And then some everything bagel. So I have 18, so I'll probably do three with the everything bagel, and the rest poppy and sesame. Sometimes I leave some plain, but 
I don't think I'm going to this time. And then we are gonna pop these in a 425 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. So you'll see them when they come out. Okay, the sandwich bread is all ready to go in the oven. It looks beautiful. Okay, the sandwich bread is out of the oven and looking, ow, beautiful. I need to grab a pot holder and turn that out. I thought my asbestos fingers could handle it, but it's still a little too hot. So I apologize for the camera moving. I just didn't set up the tripod. I am not a professional YouTuber. One of these days, maybe. Okay, let's turn that one out. Oop. And now what you can do, my next step, is if you want, you can take some butter and rub it around like the top and the sides and that just makes it soft. So I generally do that, but this turned out absolutely stunning. Okay, so while I'm finishing up the bagels and all that in the house, Andrew's gonna go out and shovel. He is got his boots, got his snow bibs, got his hoodie. Are you wearing a jacket or not? No, uh, too I'll hot. See how, I'll see if I... He's got his face mask and he's got his snow hat. So out he goes. He looks like, uh, uh, what's Ralphie's brother's name from A Christmas Story? Oh, I don't remember. Um, That's what you look... Um, I can't remember. Oh, my gosh. And it'll come to us. Yes, it's my favorite movie, and, you know, I just kind of lost it. But anyway, that's what he looks like. Randy. Randy's his name. Ralphie and Randy. Okay, now we are changing out the water. See this big water with the cord on it? It is a heated water. It does keep it from freezing. Uh, but we are going to bring it in the house to scrub out and fill. Okay, now that everything is done, I am going to sit down and have some brunch. It is brunch because I never ate breakfast. It is one o'clock, so we are going to have some leftover chicken pie. It's about a, maybe a third of a piece. A little bit of chicken salad that was left over, and some veggies and dip. So this is what is going to be my brunch. And once I'm done this, Andrew and I are going to sit and watch... Harry Potter for the 20th time. So we got all our kitchen work done and Andrew and I sat and watched part of the first Harry Potter movie for the 20th time. But this time we watched the movie magic version. It's kind of like a director's cut behind the scenes. We're about, I don't know, maybe halfway through, but Andrew's gonna go back out again and shovel. I kind of wish he'd wait, well, He's not going to shovel the whole thing because we're going to wait until it's done. He's just going to shovel the part of the driveway where Doug parks because Doug will be home shortly. And this way, the driveway will be cleared. Doug can park and then it won't get anymore. So, and then I guess once it completely stops, we'll do the rest of the shoveling. So my plan was to make chicken in basil cream sauce for supper tonight, for dinner tonight. Andrew asked if we could have like a picky dinner, a fun dinner. Um, you know, you gotta do stuff fun in the snow, right? And he wants to play cards tonight, me, him and Doug. So he asked like, he was, he went in the freezer looking for something and he saw a couple things. He's like, oh, let's have like a little smorgasbord fun dinner. We still have some crab balls in there. Um, there's some egg rolls in there. And he wants to make, remember when I showed you my butcher box and I said Andrew's favorite is the Puffin Puppies? He wants to make some of those. So, why not? Why not? It's a snow day. It's fun. Let's have some fun with it. So, that is what we are going to do. We are just going to have like a picky, snacky type dinner. Um, probably a little bit later. Doug told me he's just starting to shut down. Um, it's quarter to four. He's going to shut down, get his car cleared off, and get home. Um, so we're just going to eat a little bit later while we play cards and have some fun. So kind of fun on a snow day, right? Round two is getting the end of the driveway cleared off before Doug pulls in. Um, and Andrew got his car cleaned off, but we still need to do the van. 
because we are taking the van tomorrow when we go to see Adam. So at least it's a nice, light, fluffy snow. Andrew tried to build me a snow chicken, but it's too light and fluffy and doesn't pack well. Not good snowman or snowball fight snow. Look who just got home from work. Not like you can't see him with that jacket on. That's a, a work jacket, actually. It's a really, really nice jacket. They gave them to the office guys who have to go out into the shop once in a while. This way, he doesn't have to put on a safety vest or anything, like, over a winter coat. Plus, it saves his winter coat from getting, you know, icky if he gets something on him in the shop. But anyway, he is not supposed to be shoveling. But if you notice, he's using a tiny little shovel, and he's using his left hand or left arm. He is not using his right at all because he's not supposed to use his right. Oh, what does Sandy say? Oh, that man of mine. Yeah, well, Sandy, oh, that man of mine. <sighs> Sometimes. I just yelled at him and he did point out that it has been 48 hours and he is more than allowed to use that arm now. So, <sighs> And there he is, doing an elderly neighbors because it's just what Andrew does. So freaking proud of that kid. Okay, eight hours later, the yogurt is done. Um, I've got the made for dinner. And yeah, we're just gonna, I'm gonna start cooking everything now and we're just gonna Hang out, enjoy the evening, play some cards. Doug's got some prep for Bible study, and that's about that. So I cut one of the bagels open just to check it out, and man, is that beautiful or what? Great crumb on it. So I am going to slice all these because I like to slice them frozen. I'm going to get the bread sliced, and I'm going to get the English muffins fork split and get everything where it needs to go. Well, friends, this day is coming to an end for me. I got a lot done, was super busy, but also had a great time. So we are going to play some cards after Doug's done prepping for Bible study. Andrew is putting in some midterm grades, and then we're just going to hang out, play a game of 13, and enjoy each other's company. We have a road trip tomorrow and I will definitely bring you along as part of my weekend vlog. So have a great night, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.